And speaking of genetics, I love that you're doing genetic testing on people to really help match them with nutrition counseling, essential oils, supplements, all these things. We recently interviewed an epigenetic specialist here about that that very topic. So I love that you're integrating that. And it kind of sparked this question in me. I think that when we look at cancer specifically and genetics, a lot of the assumption out there is that the cause of cancer is your genes. Like it's it's just genetic, it's, it's there. But from the research that I've seen on this topic, really only about five to 10% of cancers are, are linked to gene defects. Is that the same studies that you've seen? And I know you've done a lot of work on the causes of cancer. So I'd love to get into that. I would agree. I think about 5% of cancers are caused genetically, but there's probably maybe everybody with cancer has genetic pathways that would be beneficial to look at to help. So let me give you an example. So you could say that, uh, okay, a BRCA gene defect, that's the gene that is the tumor suppressor gene for breast cancer and ovarian cancer. So let's take a step back again. So a tumor suppressor gene are genes that we all have that kick on when a cell goes into rapid replication. So if a cell goes into, so that's what cancer is, is a cell going into rapid replication. That's an abnormal process, but it happens on a regular basis to all of us. Cells, the replication process in the the nucleus of the cell gets interrupted. And instead of that cell replicating every 12 weeks and the mother cell dying, that's called regeneration. That happens constantly also that's what healing is the cell goes into replicating every day or multiple times a day that's what cancer is if that happens which it does it should kick on our tumor suppressor genes which then kick on a pathway to stimulate apoptosis or cell death so it it's a protective measure to keep us from getting cancer so one could say that we all have cancer, which is true if we're just finding cancer with what it is. It's rapid replication of cells. So we all have rapid cells in rapid replication Then these tumor suppressor genes kick on and cause cell death and kill the cell and protect us from ever having a diagnosis. People with defects on their tumor suppressor genes, and we'll use the BRCA genes as an example, have an increased uh, rate of cancer because they're not kicking on that important pathway with hormonally driven cancers like breast cancer. And so they have a increased risk of breast cancer because they have multiple defects in those BRCA genes. So their risk goes up. So that's a small percentage of the population. And that's not really what we're really concentrating on when we look at genes with a cancer patient. We look at other risk factors, like if, like I described, let's say if I have a lot of defects on my POD1 pathway, that's a pathway that helps me detox large chemicals in my liver. So if I have a lot of defects on that POD1 pathway, and I'm exposed to toxins in my food, food colorings, uh, chemical herbicides and pesticides, I don't detox those as well as I could if I didn't have those defects. So it doesn't mean I won't detox them, but I'm going to be a slower detoxer of those things. So let's say you and I were living next to each other. We're both exposed to the same toxic load, but I have a lot of defects on my pond pathway and you don't. You could clear them out easier than the risk of ill health because of of storing toxins is going to be less for you because you'll be storing less. I, the risk of ill health, including cancer, for me is, is higher because I'm not getting rid of those poisons. And if I don't get rid of poisons, they can't keep circulating in my blood. They'll kill me. My body stores them in the cells or in the extracellular spaces. And then if they're stored in the cells... They could, at some point down the road, interrupt that replication cycle, and it could cause rapid replication. And that's what you talk about a cause of cancer is a pesticide or, or an herbicide or some chemical or a combination of the slurry of 
thousands of different chemicals that I've been exposed to over the years, then that that is the cause of cancer for me. So looking at those detox pathways genetically could be extremely beneficial prior to somebody getting cancer and actually be a better idea, right? So, boy, I have a lot of pond pathway defects. Then you go, okay, what from the literature that's out there helps support that pond pathway? And then what from a looking at metabolic charts, what are the uh, the other cofactors that help push that pond pathway? Would it be wise to supplement my diet or supplement with specific nutrition to help support that pathway to help my slow detox of my pond pathway to be maybe a medium detox of my pond pathway. I'm able to get rid of those things. And then lifestyle changes like, wow, because I have these pond pathway defects, I'm going to even be more careful not to spray pesticides on my in my house or spray herbicides on my lawn. Because now I can see the correlation. My risk is higher for all sorts of problems because of that. 